Okay, today is December the 3rd. My name is Karen New York. I'm a librarian at Oklahoma State University in Stillwater. And I'm here with uh, former First Lady Ann Halligan to do an oral history interview. Thank you for coming today, Ann, for the interview. Thank you for having me. Okay, let's start with a little biographical information about you. Where were you born and raised? I was born in Iowa, you know. Uh, lived in a very small town, raised in Iowa, went to school um, in the same little school for 12 years, had wonderful teachers. We didn't have kindergarten then, but it was grades 1 through 12. We got to do everything in our little high school. We got to be in the glee club, we played basketball, we were cheerleaders, got to do it all. <clears throat> and nobody got into trouble because everybody knew everybody, and if you did something off he got home before you did. So we were very protected. Um, I graduated from high school. I thought it was the end of the world. I'm leaving my friends. There were 15 in our class, and Jim was one of those members. But we, I went to junior college and made new friends and got to do a lot of things, take a lot of classes I hadn't had in my high school. <clears throat> and then I worked a year in a law firm, but I had part-time jobs when I was in college in, in, in Fort Dodge, Iowa. I was in a dress shop, very nice dress shop, where I was a stock girl. But we had some nice customers and, and it, was, it was a great experience. These people were wonderful to me. And I graduated then and got a job in a law firm. I loved it. And I remember a distinctive thing about that law firm. There were two partners. And the uh, lady who'd been there for 14 years, Faye, I remember how she treated me. And it was wonderful. And I thought I took a lesson from that on how to treat some new kid on the block. She was fabulous. And so after that, uh, Jim and I got married. And uh, we moved to Washington, D.C., because that's where he was stationed in the Air Force. And we were there for about a year and a half. Had our first child there. I worked what in year was that? Uh, we, moved, we got married in 57 mm -hmm. and went to Washington, D.C. And this girl from this little town in Iowa, to the big city of Washington, it was a great experience. Because I was a kid who went through school and did not like history. It was dates and things. But... History came alive to me in Washington. It was great. I worked in a law firm for a while, and then we had our first baby. It was a preemie, and I had uh, so I had to stop with health reasons. But anyway, after Jim finished his tour of the Air Force, we moved then to Ames, Iowa, where he was a student. And um, I got a part-time job at the TV studio <laughs> to make enough money to keep us going. He had the GI Bill. And we were there four years. And then we moved to Baytown, Texas, where he had a job at um, Humble Oil. He was a chemical engineer. And in there, in about, I think we were there about a year and a half, maybe. In the early 60s. In Baytown, Texas. And he had, and so we had our second child there. So we had babies in Washington and Texas, and then the third one was born in Ames, Iowa, because he went back to school. So we drug our feet back to Ames, Iowa, and um, he had offers other places, but Iowa State said, hey, come back, come back. So we did, and um, we went through graduate school there, and uh, we made it on his assistantship, and he graduated, and when we moved then to his first job out of uh, out of his PhD, it was Texas Tech, and so that's where I went back to school. And I was scared to death going back. Here I was, like thirty five years old, and we had three boys, and husband on the faculty doing like teaching three classes and doing research. And so I was, the kids were so nice, so I'd go to class. They were wonderful. Again, how you treat people, how they. It's all about that. And so I stretched it out over four years to accommodate the family. And then I got hired right away in the high school, the high school business. I loved it. And a couple years there, and then Jim got two job offers one summer. And I cried all the way to Dallas because uh -huh. we had a perfect house. We had a perfect neighborhood. I had a perfect job. It was all good. Well, anyway, we moved to... Rolla, Missouri, where he had a, uh, was a dean, and um, I subbed a little bit in the schools, but the lady who sold us our house said, come to work for me, and 
I said, I couldn't sell you a coconut hot day, Mary. <laughs> and again, that's another person, Mary Lee, one of the best people I ever met in my life. She grew up in Rolla, Missouri, poor, and they, she made a life, and her husband was in the postal business, in the postal office, and she had a successful uh, real estate career. And I remember how she uh, interacted with her with her people. I mean, she was, I've had some lovely, wonderful people in my life as, as we went along. So I did that for a couple of years, and then Arkansas came along and hired him, and I went there, and I sold real estate in Arkansas. And then at the end of five years there, we went to New Mexico State, and I said, okay, I'm done. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. I have no clue, but I'm not going to try to work in your president, okay? So I got there, and the first thing I knew, I was getting asked to be on community boards. Oh. There's no job description for a spouse. Mm -hmm. So I did that, and then that kind of thing followed me here. So I was, I've been an, a professional volunteer, and I've loved it. Yeah, it's been great. Yeah. So you're back to your associate college uh, uh -huh. degree. Was that business related? It was. I was training to be a medical records librarian. Okay. I thought that's what I wanted to do. I used to think I wanted to be a nurse, and then I realized I couldn't give somebody a shot. You know. Anyway, I I got that training, but I also took psychology, sociology, biology, uh, French, uh, things that we hadn't had in high school. So I did that, and when I went to the hospital to interview for that job, which I knew was open, he saw a diamond ring on my hand. And he said, well, when are you getting married? And I said, a little over a year from now. He's out of the country in the Air Force. He said, you know what? You can't. You can't do it. I remember his name. Oh. <laughs> but I, then I, I was devastated. And so I, I don't remember how I found the law, the law office job, but I did. And it was a real a good experience. I worked for two really fine lawyers and then the lady, Faye, who treated me so well and taught me and helped me. And so it worked out to be a great thing after all. What was Faye's last name? Tonsfeld. Tonsfeld. T-O-N-S-F-E-L-D-T. She was a single person. She was like about 45 years old. Mm -hmm. And I was, what, 18, I guess. She was I, that got to calling her Aunt Faye. She was oh. just a wonderful lady. And I stayed in touch with her long after we moved away. And of course, she's gone now. But and it's just, it was a real lesson in how to treat some new kid on the block, mm -hmm. so to speak. You know, that's great. What kind of work were you doing at the law firms? Oh, you took dictation, shorthand. Oh, I had shorthand and, and all of that. And I had accounting classes in junior college. Uh, you took dictation, um, Mr. Loth. The main law uh, guy, he would not take a divorce case, would not touch it. He um, did a lot of uh, mortgage work, land descriptions, and in that day we had electric typewriters, and you did an original and six carbons. You probably have never heard of such a thing at your young, but it was a lot of proofreading, a lot of typing, and a lot of taking shorthand. I got to be really good, and I could type really fast. and. Then you proofread, and you didn't want to make a mistake because you had to go through, and then uh, that that mostly that kind of work, mm -hmm. and um, I then learned in that office uh, we had an estate situation where he was settling an estate for this family, and I remember them coming in the office. Some sat on one side of the room, and some, well, some sat on the other, and they were bitter enemies about forty acres of land. And it was it was it was heated in there, but it, we got out of it. Nobody got hurt or anything. But I could it, I had not seen that before, and I thought how mad people could get over a little bit of land, and I don't remember how it was resolved. But but I remember in the building where I worked, um, we had an elevator operator in that day. That goes this goes back to. Of 56, 57, and her name was Billy, and she was dressed to the nines, and she, Flora, please. It, it, it was cool, it was very cool. In this little town, <laughs> had about 25,000 people, mm -hmm. and really, really nice department stores, which were losing like crazy these days. I just hate to see that, but uh, anyway, it was, it was a fun place. <laughs> Long winters, but. So you grew up knowing Jim? I did, met him in first grade. Oh. Mm -hmm. 
And we had wonderful teachers. We were in grades one and two in one room, grades three and four in another classroom, and then grades five and six, and then seven and eight, and then nine through 12 in the high school room. <coughs> and so we, we had really good teachers. Uh, they cared about us. Uh, it, it was it was a good thing, and I think there were some, there were some of us who were kind of maybe not very well to do, but it, it, everybody was there. It was okay. No, nobody had any big differences. I don't remember any bullying. Um, we just all got kind of along. With about half the class were boys and half were girls, half were Protestant and half were Catholic, and that was the biggest thing in that day: Protestants and Catholics. I mean, we didn't have any people of color, but um, that was the biggest division, if anything. Mm -hmm. But we never thought about it. it. It was just we were had that difference. Mm -hmm. did, so, did you and Jim date in high school? When I was 16, I could date. Mm -hmm. Not before. We wrote notes to each other before that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, um, and we'd go for walks, you know. But no, and then we dated, and he always took me to the movies. Uh, he had a job. He he had he had to work, and uh, we um, he would always go out to eat and go to the movies. And he played sports, and we were together and all of that. But he lived in, <coughs> in the little town where the school was, and I lived five miles away. So I rode the yellow school bus. Mm -hmm. So every morning when I see the yellow school bus in our neighborhood, I go, Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> It was it was a good growing up. I, I feel how lucky we were, even though we didn't have all the big classes. Like Jim had to go back and take some math at Iowa State that to get through chemical engineering. Mm -hmm. And but you know, in spite of that, we had we were protected between our churches and the people in the community and the teachers. We we were spared a lot of grief that some kids get today. I think I see that. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay, and you said you have three boys, mm -hmm. and they're, they are, uh, tell me a little bit about them. Michael uh, was our first one, born in Washington, and he was a preemie, weighed three pounds. Oh. Um, we couldn't, in that day, We he was kept in the preemie nursery. I, stay, I was in the hospital like 10 days or so. Um, I had eclampsia, and they, they, I went into a coma, and it was it was crazy. Uh, here we were 1,500 miles away from family. <clears throat> but anyway, um, we could go to the nursery once a week and see him. They'd bring him to the window, couldn't touch him. Oh. So it got to be five pounds, and you know, today, oh, he's, he's 61, <clears throat> and he has three girls, and his, he and his wife have in Houston, and two of the girls went to school here. One is in Houston with the great grandkids, and the other one's in New York City. And uh, their third one teaches deaf education, and she went to Stephen F. Austin. So we were excited last week when Stephen F. Austin beat Duke, because we know the coach yeah. is Stephen F. Oh. He used to be here. And then the second son is Patrick. He was born in <laughs> Baytown, Texas. Uh, he, uh, well, back to Michael, he went to school at Texas Tech, civil engineer, and then when he got out of school, he went to work in Houston area, and he got an uh, MBA at the University of Houston, but he works for um, 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 Occidental, but he's, he's an engineer. Mm -hmm. uh, Patrick um, was born in Baytown, and uh, we, um, he, let me see. Well, he went to school at the University of Arkansas and joined ROTC and then went into the Air Force. He's a pilot, Air Force pilot for 26 years, now flies for United. He also does a lot of training in the simulator. He was the second boy who I got notes from the teachers about too much talking. And, and this is this is our pilot. I mean, this kid, I mean, he's, he's really... He's doing what he should. Mm -hmm. And he and Tracy have two kids. Uh, Megan, <laughs> uh, Shay is a, um, in Little Rock. He has a very good job in finance. And Maggie is a CPA. She's married, lives in Miami, Florida in high rise. Uh, her husband works at the University of Miami in the f football program. And he's um, not a coach, but a logistics. And Maggie works for Pricewaterhouse. She's a CPA. <clears throat> Both those kids have their masters from um, Arkansas. And then uh, the youngest one, Christopher, was born in Ames, Iowa, at Mary Greeley Hospital. And everybody who went to Iowa State, we all had babies at Mary Greeley. 
<clears throat> he ended up going to uh, school at the University of Arizona and got a degree in English. And he then went to school. He said he wanted to go to law school. Dad said, you've got to work for a while. And so he said, we are decided where you want to live. And he started thinking of San Francisco and all that. We knew what the living costs were like that in those places. It was insane. He chose Austin, Texas. So we took him there, moved him in. I stayed for a week, got him a furnished apartment for a summer lease and decided if everybody liked each other. He got hired at Dell Computer and <clears throat> took calls from displeased customers for a while and then he was into sales did very well and they paid him in stock and that turned out to be incredible um as time went on um he and sarah got married sarah went to school at arkansas and um she and pat's wife both grew up in hot springs arkansas so we had two weddings in hot springs <laughs> but he and sarah got married and then they were in Austin for 10 and a half years, and they had two boys there, uh, two of the grand boys. And then uh, they moved to the East Coast, and now they're in North Carolina. And their grand, the, the little, their daughter was born in Virginia before they moved to North Carolina. And now she's going to school in upstate New York in this freezing weather, this little girl boy. But anyway, they're doing all, they're all doing very well. They're all married with their kids and educating their kids. And so we're really, and they're our best friends. And so it's really, it's been good. But but two of the boys graduated, we were in Arkansas for a while. And Pat and Chris, the two younger ones, graduated from high school in Fayetteville. And so they still have friends there. So, you know, they've stayed in touch. And mm -hmm. so that it's been good. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then you went back to school. I did. When you all landed in Lubbock mm -hmm. at Texas Tech. Mm -hmm. You uh you have a bachelor's in business education. I do. Did you have trouble making deciding what to major in? I did. Um, Jim said, uh, when we got there, we rented a house. And then uh, after a year there, we bought a house. And it was a perfect house. It's still a gorgeous house. I could live in it again. But um, at, for, for a year then, we stayed in that house. And, but Jim said, I want you to have a bachelor's degree. If something happens to me, I want you to be able to take care of the boys. So I go up to the campus and I go to the um, counselors and I said, you know what, I think I'd like to wear a white uniform to work. I'd like to be a nurse. So I took an aptitude test, which was another experience. Nothing nothing in there for nursing for me but but a lot of options so business ed was one thing and i did like and mike grew up in a grocery store so i watched my family doing business and so i chose business education i had a really good advisor um she said now you're gonna have to take another pe class but you're getting closer you're, you're over 35 and so we've got a lecture class i said well what else is there and it was ballet, classical ballet. Uh, another new thing for me. And so I took it and we had a pianist in the room and we had two mornings a week from 7.30 to nine. I loved it. It introduced me to something I hadn't seen. I knew some of the music from it, you know, some the, the Tchaikovsky music and all. But anyway, that was a great experience, a new thing for me. And um, then I, I went to school accordingly, and I learned how to like history again because they taught it differently. Um, and I took a geology class, but I had all the uh, corporation finance, all the stuff, and Jim tutored me in calculus, and we're still married because <laughs> he was a math pro. He, he had every math class it was. Um, so I got hired. I went to, I went to in my interview. I finished one summer. <clears throat> in the middle of the summer because I had that one class to take and the boys were in three different baseball teams. It was, you know how that is. So I go in at the end of the summer to interview and people had said to me, have you interviewed with Mr. Knight yet? And I said, well, no. He said, well, I so I put on my favorite dress. I went in and I'm fearful of what this guy. So he said, well, why didn't you come in here sooner? So I said, I had a couple of classes to take in the summer. I want to make sure I got through it okay. He said, well, I don't have a job for you. I said, okay, that's all right. I just want to be on the list for a business teacher. Then he said, well, would you go to work in the central office and do some clerical work? And I said, yes, I would. And so I went there in the central office in Lubbock and I uh, uh, did 
week, week by week. And then one week they called and said, hey, Coronado High School needs a business teacher. So I did that. But I had done my practice teaching at Lubbock High School in uh, secretarial practice. Mm -hmm. I had the most wonderful girls in there. They, they were precious. And Miss Job was a teacher. And I, there were so many cool people, nice people. It was a good, good thing. So then I went to Coronado and uh, had high school. I had four accounting classes and one general business. And so I discovered that the sophomores are a little, little young and you know, kind of distracted. The juniors are perfect, and the mm -hmm. seniors are ready to get out of school. But it was great, uh, and I felt lucky being a high school teacher, having been the mother, being the mother of three boys. Mm -hmm. I think a twenty-one-year-old graduate might find it more challenging. But I had heard a few boy jokes, and you know, <laughs> um, I loved it. I loved it. It was just a joy. Yeah. So I think I read um, that your family, that you took camping trips to New Mexico. We did. While you were in Lubbock. We did. We um, we had some friends, after we bought our first house, we had met some friends around the corner and they had an Airstream trailer. And you know, there's one park downtown here now on the Christmas lot. If you've seen it, it's got lights over it. <laughs> so they, they said, you should get one. So they found, they heard of one that had been in a barn in San Antonio for a oh. long time, but it, it was practically new. So we bought it, big investment for us at the time, huge. But anyway, we had the three boys and we bought then a car big enough to pull it. And that's what gave me a lesson for my high school kids. We had found this 98 old smoke. It was a big, Thing, but you had to have that to pull one. Uh, I went in, Jim said, go see it. And I said, I was scared of the thing. So I had the guy drive me around <laughs> and we did. I said, we like it, we'd like to buy it after I talked to Jim. So I went back um, the next, after school one day and the guy said, well, it's been sold. I said, oh, well, okay, we'll find something else. And in a few days he called and he said, you know, the deal fell through. They hadn't paid yeah. some bills and their credit wasn't good. So it's a few. So I said, well, we'll take it. So I could tell my kids in the classroom, what happens if you don't pay your bills and take care of your credit? Mm -hmm. And I said, see, now, now we've got this car. So we would, <laughs> we'd go. We went lots of places. We came to Oklahoma once. Uh, Jim was in an uh, engineering meeting. It was here in Stillwater. We parked at Lake Carl Blackwell. Uh, we, we took a lot of them around Texas. We took it to Iowa. We took it to Louisiana. We had it in New Orleans. Um, I don't think we got any farther east than, than Louisiana and Arkansas. But it was a good time. You had, everybody had enough storage for their stuff. You'd take the cat and the dog, had your own dirt with you. It was perfect. And we had friends and we were in a trader club and it, it was good. But we'd leave at 10 o'clock at night because everybody was working. You'd get ready by then and have your groceries loaded. And and it was just a good thing. It was, it was wonderful. So we, and I remember, oh, we got, we, one time we were driving it. Where we were going? But anyway, I found myself behind the wheel pulling it through Tulsa. Oh. And, uh, but we made it. But uh, it just little experiences like that. But we, we had it lots of places, Montana and mm -hmm. all, all over. But, um, it was a good time, and the re one regret we had about it was that we hadn't been able to get it sooner when Mike was a little younger, because he was in high school by then. But we had time; they had to be, they had to get along with each other and all that. So it was it was happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. good. Okay, so um, you all stayed very busy we between did. your boys and we do you going back to school and. And everything we you know, were that was... we were busy every night was homework everybody had homework Jim was doing grading or whatever I was doing studying the boys had homework we never watched any shows because we had to get that done and get to bed mm -hmm. and so then when I was teaching I would be up I'd get up about three in the morning and grade papers you can't do that in the classroom no, you can't. I taught high school. Yeah, oh, for what six what years. did you teach? I taught high school English. Did you? Oh, yes. everybody yes. loves their English teacher. Yeah. In fact, Jim would tell you this is because of his English teacher. He went to college. Oh. But yeah, you you know the drill. You know? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay, we're going to shift into yeah. your time of, as being a first lady. Mm -hmm. 
And um, I think your first, uh, is there such a thing as an interim first lady when you were at Arkansas, was that? Well, Jim was the interim then. No, I wasn't considered that there. Uh, he, he started there as Dean of Engineering for three mm -hmm. years. And then the, um, he was a vice chancellor for a year. And then there were squabbles over there and they said, would you be interim chancellor? And he said, okay. I said, this is a big waste of engineering talent, Jim. Mm -hmm. And so we he did that for, he in that year, the, the political squabbling between a couple of people on the campus, I said, you gotta get out of the fourth floor of that building. I don't care where, just get out, get out of that. Uh, I love Fayetteville. Uh, we were there just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it was a darling, wonderful town. Uh, we loved our house. I loved what I was doing, uh, but I said, you can't be in that fourth floor anymore. This is awful. And then about that time, New Mexico State started contacting and they made it to town. They came to town and said, we're gonna take you to lunch. I said, well, let's just go have a good time, but I love it here. Mm -hmm. But so did Jim, so did the boys. Um, so we went and had a fun lunch downtown on the square. And the next thing we knew, we were getting invited there um, along with another place. And we did two interviews in one week and went to New Mexico State. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, I have, we have good feelings about Arkansas. In fact, we've got six graduates in the family from Arkansas. One son, two daughters-in-law, two grandchildren, and then Seth, our other grandchild by marriage. So we have, um, we've got a lot of hogs in the family. <laughs> we do, and they're good. I mean, we love them, but uh, it was a happy time. Mm -hmm. So that was your role as I, I, first lady was at New Mexico State. Yeah, University. I was still selling real estate in Fayetteville back oh, when okay. that was going on, mm -hmm. and so I sold residential, and I love that because you learn all about financing and you learn you know your town, and uh, it's totally changed now. But that uh, the last time I did that was '84. I got my license go when Jim became president out west, but uh, that was a good career for me because I learned a tremendous amount about all that goes into selling a house and put the financing and mm -hmm. all that. Yeah, it was good. Loved it. Yeah. So was it, um, was it a big change for you to have to become a first lady? Yeah, yeah, New Mexico yeah. State. I, it was. I, I, we were kind of in a state of shock about it because he had never, you know, I know of people who live to be a dean or live to be a president. We've watched some of this mm -hmm. and, and it doesn't come their way. Uh, but it was never a topic of discussion in our house. We were just happy chemical engineer. Okay. Anyway, um, I didn't know what to expect because there was no job description. And I remember the interview we had. One of the ladies said to me, what do you want, what do you think your role is? I said, I just want to be a good wife and a good mother. And my boys just, I thought they, when they heard that, and, and they weren't with us, they said, mom. <laughs> but I, I meant it. I wanted to keep the family together. I didn't know what it was going to be. And so it turned out to be wonderful. It really did. And I didn't, they just started calling me first lady. I didn't name myself. Uh, we had a wonderful house to live in. Uh, there was a housekeeper who had been on with the president for eight or nine years before we got there. She was an employee of the physical plant. Um, the house was big and had been, they had, the president had taken a lot of heat to build that house. <clears throat> and they'd been in it a year and then they moved out and they, they stopped. And there we were at this huge adobe house up on the golf course. And it was it was such a change. And people would say to us, well, which do you like best? Was Fayetteville or this? I said, these are two different worlds. They really mm -hmm. are because you're in the desert. I don't know if you've been out there, but it's, it's in the desert. <clears throat> it's very different. And we had been to New Mexico before, but not Las Cruces. We've been to El Paso <coughs> and Cloudcroft and the mountainous areas around. But Las Cruces is a desert town, 4,000 feet in elevation. Half the population is Hispanic. <clears throat> Lots of wonderful Mexican food. I say if you haven't eaten until you've eaten there. Um, it, they were very good to us, very good to us. And we got acquainted with the state in a different way. And um, 
We had a good office staff. Jim Jim kept them. He didn't haul anybody from Arkansas. Um, it it was it was a good time. We had to, the enrollment had gone down. We had to work to get it up, get the Hispanic population to, um, you know, be involved, get their get their education because we're first generation college people ourselves. <laughs> and um, we were 50 miles from El Paso. If you weren't going to the airport, you went to El Paso. Um, across, if you looked out the windows in the house, you saw the Oregon Mountains. They're very rugged. And on the other side of that was White Sands Missile Range. And that a big army post. And how um, Alamogordo, uh, from a bit farther up the road, is Air, um, Holloman Air Force Base. So very military mm -hmm. out that way. And uh, that was new to us. Uh, even though Jim had been in the military, but it, it was good. We we had a happy life there. There was uh, the only racial kabongs there were was when he'd go to Santa Fe, and they'd be upset about the Anglo presidents weren't doing enough. And I have a friend here in Stillwater who lived in Los Alamos, worked there for a while, and she'll tell you very different stories about living in northern New Mexico, not not so friendly. But where we were, it was it was good. We never felt anything and i met i took a little bit of spanish i can't speak it but i can function mm -hmm. and um, we had a housekeeper she was raised in juarez but we learned about the border <laughs> and um it was a whole new world to us because a lot of people came to um, el paso and las cruces to have their babies and they had had no prenatal care that was a new thing who'd ever heard of that you know we there are things that happen there we don't have a clue about here in this part of the country. And living on two interstates, I-10 and I-25, the campus sat between, it, you get a real education about it. And the climate's pretty good, so you can have people. Uh, it, it was a lot of new different things for us, but it was we consider a very positive time. Mm -hmm. It was good there. Mm -hmm. And so after 10 years, Jim said, you know, I need to stop doing this. I want to do something else. And he kind of believes 10 years, if you can't get it done, let's move on. <clears throat> About that time, o Oklahoma State came along and they had contacted him one other time somewhere in the midst. But we, so we came here to interview. And I, I see we came separately because we had bought a place in Branson, Missouri, because as we lived that life, we saw other presidents get fired. You know, they last two or three years. Mm -hmm. And we thought, now, hmm, what is it? it could happen to us. And so we bought a condo in Branson because we loved going there. We'd go back and see our friends in that part and have the kids come meet us. So I had gone back there to close on a second condo just because it was an investment, because you don't own a house. You, you've sold your house and you don't own property. Uh, I guess you could try to and try to prove that it was your, but we didn't try to play that game. <clears throat> so I was there, so they came and picked me up in, in the Missouri and Jim was here. And I remember the thing we liked most about this was the people. Something here about the people, I, to this day, it's the same thing. and. Um, so we interviewed here. Um, it was a crazy day. Um, um, Mrs. Bogert showed me around. It was a cold, gray, April 29th, kind of very dreary. Um, I had by chance grabbed a little coat out of the closet before I came this way. But um, what year was that? Uh, 1980, 1994. Right. April of 1994. Mm -hmm. So we um, had the interview here and we were staying in the student union. And after the end of the day, it, it was, I don't remember all the details about it, but I know one of the regents asked me, what, 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 what will you do? And I said, well, I'm just very traditional. Um, and I told her what I'd done in New Mexico, a lot of board, community boards, nonprofits. And uh, that was, you know, because there's no job description for you. And and that's, I'm not complaining, it's just the way it is. You you make it what it is. And if you talk to presidents' wives all around the country, everybody has something different. Some demand faculty positions, and uh, that is like, so the campus doesn't like that very much. Uh, we've learned over the years of going to the land-grant meetings. But anyway, um, we did that, and we went to sleep in the student union. 
and it was 10 o'clock that night and the phone rang and they wanted us to come to the boardroom. Well, we, ha we had been- That night? Yes. And here I am. I still remember what I was wearing. It, we, the hose and the, we got dressed and we found our way to the boardroom. We, uh, and we fluffed up enough to get there and they offered him the job. And, and so Jim said, I told my, I had five regents at New Mexico State, and they said, I need to call my regents. Um, they said, they really didn't want him to leave. But anyway, we decided to take this. Mm -hmm. And it, it's been a great, it was a great thing. And we were lucky to be able to stay here, because a lot of times people get run out of town. Something has gone, and they have to leave, and we decided to just stay here and, and it's been a great life here so but it's a, it's a good campus it's pretty so what is a first lady expected to do were there expectations for you here uh, no uh, I um, I I talked every day as in New Mexico I talked to the lady in the office here it was Charlotte Razook and she uh, is a scheduler and that's who you really talk to. And so <laughs> we got it connected that way. Jim always said, I want you to be at all the evening events that we ever have or go to. And he made that clear. He want, I want me to be included in all of that. So every night we had something. So I was my, I felt like it was my job to get dressed up, be presentable, uh, go, uh, be congenial, meet people. And then we had things at the house. We greeted everybody. And when we did, we did a lot at the house. Um, we uh, we plan. I plan with the office mm -hmm. what we thought we'd like to have, and the office would contact the caterers. They didn't need three women contacting them, so that's how we ran it. It was very. It ran very well. Uh, we had uh, not huge groups, maybe fifty students, and we chose groups of students that, because of what they were doing on campus, it was kind of a thank you for them. <laughs> we had the housekeepers a few times. Um, we always figured a housekeeper, a department secretary is probably maybe the only smile a kid gets in a day mm -hmm. sometimes. Um, they're valuable people in your world. And so there was nothing written down for me, but um, I was always going to everything. And then I had my community board service that I did, and that got me into the community. I uh, got acquainted with people I would not, not might not know otherwise, learned of the things in the community that I might not think of so much. Uh, so that was how I spent my life. We had a housekeeper five days a week in New Mexico. I didn't have the, I, she had, that was her position. She was a single mother. Well, here, the house had been empty for a year by the time we got here. Uh, it needed some work done on it. It wasn't ready for us. And uh, so I said, just a couple mornings a week would be enough if I have somebody from physical plant. And then whenever we have an event, I want that person to come and be kind of in charge of the kitchen. So we had all our own dishes in there. Um, and and it, you, we just lived. And people would come in the house and they'd say, well, where's your stuff? What was downstairs, we had everything that we owned was here in the downstairs of that house. Um, the... Um, we, we raised some money privately to do some new carpet and some new kitchen flooring and a few things like that at that house. Um, and now they've done a lot of nice things to it. But it is a thing that when we got here, people said, you can live in that? And I said, well, yes. But they were putting a new roof and heating air conditioning in it. And we were in an apartment the first nine months. Um, I said, yeah, we are. They said, you should blow it up or pray for it, tornado. <laughs> No way, no way. And people are honored to go to the president's house. Mm -hmm. They are. And uh, some had never been there. Um, people never bothered us there. Um, we had neighbors. Um, we uh, walked in the neighborhood every day. We got to know our neighbors, uh, the neighbor's dogs. Mm -hmm. It was delightful, it was just delightful. Uh, so I just did whatever came along that we needed to do, wherever we needed to go, whoever we needed to come in. Uh, I just made it work. Because you, you whoever is the president needs a teammate that is willing to 
adapt and do. And when he'd come home at night, he didn't want to be asked any questions, no questions. Uh, just we'll go do what we do. And I thought if something happens on the campus, I'll read about it in the old college or something. <clears throat> but it was just the, all the pressure he felt was on him. And I think that is how a president is. You have a, a, some staff, but you, you kind of, it becomes your decision. Whereas when he was in the Senate years later, then if there were other people to share the responsibility, he'd come home and talk all evening about it. Mm -hmm. And so it made the difference. But but it, it, we were very happy. Um, we got home most every night by 9.30, because we kind of go to bed early. We get up early, exercise in the morning. And um, it, it's a really great life. The kids, the students are what make it. And the alums, those are the two best things about a job like that, a position mm -hmm. like that, it really is. And all the sports and theater and music. And Which boards did you become involved with first when you came? The sports? No, uh, the boards. Oh, the, the boards. The community oh. service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, United Way, mm -hmm. uh, and then shortly after that, the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, and those, uh, the hospital especially, that blew me away when the mayor called and said, Wow, but I loved it. I really did. We had term limits on that. <clears throat> you had nine year term limits, but somebody had, had had the spot at the board and moved away. So I got appointed in his place. So I served eight years. I served United Way probably at least that long. Uh, I chaired board, chaired the board in both those cases. I had a call from um, um, a lady in Tulsa wanted me to serve on the Tulsa Ballet Board. So I said, yes. And because when I was in Fayetteville, I had done some, um, we had gone to the Tulsa Ballet for something. You were really connected with Tulsa if you're in Fayetteville. <clears throat> so I had done, I had taken some ads from Tulsa Ballet to Fayetteville to help. Anyway, then I had, um, uh, one of the, somebody from Tulsa Paper called me and would you be on the Girl Scouts Board? I, I said, well, I have three boys. I was a 4-H girl. He said, we want you to serve on the Girl Scouts board. So I did that for, again, we had term limits. Mm -hmm. um, so I did that. So I was, I was going to Tulsa at least three or four times a month, mm -hmm. going into meetings. And then you had committee meetings on the side. We had a hospital board once a month. And we had then committees on the side of that. And you'd have a breakfast or a lunch meeting or something. And I learned so much about all of that. And then I think then I was on the Friends of the Library board here, Friends of Music board. Oh, shortly after I got here, I was invited to well, they figured out I was an Alpha Chi alum initiate. And so I had gone in the student union to shop, and this lady had this really cute shop in there, Mr. G's. And she was the house mother for Alpha Chi. And so I guess somehow they all, some people we found when we were moving here, people knew each other from these two schools. They had gone, some had gone here, some had gone there. It was this kind of a small world, and they kind of knew everything about you. What have they done? What are they like? You know, kind of thing. And people from Oklahoma State came out to see us after Jim was hired in April. We didn't move here until the 1st of August. They came out. To Las Cruces? Mm hmm To mm -hmm. see, well, got this, we got that. The foundation people uh -huh. came out. They came out and we had them at the house. Uh, people from the Ocala came out. Uh, it was like they knew everything before we got here. But back to, um, where was I? With the, uh, oh, the sorority. We need a financial advisor. And I had done that at New Mexico State. So I, okay, I did that for 15 years. Uh -huh. And so I discovered we weren't, things were not just how they should have been. So I made a date every week with the treasurer of the sorority. And we had a date at her convenience and we paid bills. We wrote check, two, two signatures on every check. <clears throat> we had to plan the budget, see how much the bills were going to be for the girls the next year. I was sensitive to that because we put three boys through college <clears throat> and you didn't want to get the bills too high for them, but you wanted them to have everything. I had to keep the house full because it's like your income is coming in. And I loved working with my girls. I, I went every week. I did. 
and Mom Jane, and it it was it was a happy time. But then we got to a point where <clears throat> Nationals wanted us to be everything computered, computerized, and I I hadn't had a computer yet, uh, and I said, okay, um, this is going we have to buy a special computer just for this particular thing. Uh, now our audit will be four hundred dollars instead of one hundred dollars every year. Um, this is going to raise the bills for the girls. But then everybody was all aboard because you could do everything online with credit cards. And I said, you're going to raise people's credit card debt. Not, the high school business teacher coming out here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, but it, it, they, they won out, and I, I get it. I get it. But anyway, uh, uh, but I loved, and I still see some of my girls. And they gave me a big honor about two years ago for what I had done. Uh, so it was. Um, what was the honor? Oh, and the just service to Alpha Chi to the Greek, and, and mm -hmm. it was the Greek system that it was a big deal in the ballroom. I was so surprised. I got this beautiful award. <clears throat> Some of the girls came back that I hadn't seen for a while, and you know they're grown up and have kids, and uh, it, was, it was it was it was pretty cool. <clears throat> That's right. So that that was good, and. Uh, all of that, and now I'm on uh, the Botanic Garden Board and the uh, Advisory Board for Payne County Youth Services. Ann Hargis got me into that one. We were somewhere. <clears throat> she said, I'm going to be on the Advisory Board. Would you come go with me? And I said, oh, okay. So she got on her phone and said, she said, yeah. <laughs> so we do that. And you don't have to do the monthly meetings, but you do support. Mm -hmm. You go to their annual event. And do what you can to support the, the youth shelter has been here a long time as you know <clears throat> about 46 years mm -hmm. so it's it's a thing that we've got a lot of kids that need a respite stay so that's mm -hmm. what it is so in the botanic garden is a wonderful place and so i do that and uh i'm in a peo chapter and that i've served office in that and uh, been in an investment club and a book club and uh, we're at the emeritive what members of the emeriti faculty. So there's there's plenty to do here. We're lucky we could stay and have all this kind of stuff to do. Mm -hmm. Good. <clears throat> okay, I understand that you were involved um, with the, well, then it was the National Association of State Universities and Land Grant Colleges, mm -hmm. the Council on Presidents mm -hmm. and Chancellor Spouses mm -hmm. Partners. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about that. It was great. It held every November somewhere. Uh, we didn't make it every year because there are a lot of things on the campus that you need to stay here for. You can't just whip off. Uh, but we did. It, they would have me in Chicago, Atlanta. It, they had it at different places. It was great because the spouses had a group. We were called the COPS, the Council of president's spouse, something like that. Mm -hmm. But we had our own meetings and our husbands had their meetings. And it was about a three-day thing. But you got to go to some city and see something there. And you heard what they all did. And uh, the various, uh, some of them refused to live in president's houses. Some refused to do anything on Sunday related to the university. <clears throat> Sometimes the wife lived in another place because of her spot. And he would be chancellor or president somewhere and they had a long distance um we had we would tell story we would share things one of my favorites was the president's wife of ucla she had uh these manners that she stuck with it she was hilarious but really good but we had a little singing group and uh, we we had a good time <clears throat> but it was really about sharing about what the things that you found that are helpful, things that happened to you, and how did you solve it? And so it was pretty interesting because we came from a lot of different parts of the country. But RSVP doesn't mean much to anybody anywhere. And you found people, that was the hardest thing. And of course, it's the people in the office, the staff, that has to collect these RSVPs for whatever event you're doing anywhere. And that was always a big topic. <clears throat> something would come up, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, President's Houses. One of my friends had a two-story house. They lived in a two-story house, and she said she had the stairway roped off, and she they found women upstairs going through her makeup. Oh, no. Uh, 
it's just, you know, it, it's just people. But they come in the president's house, they want to walk everywhere and see it. They really do. <clears throat> and they, you're, it's, that's, I have a friend here who always has a Christmas party. And I find it, it's a coffee. And if she, they walk all over her house, but she decorates every corner of it. But I don't do that. Mm -hmm. I've had them go through every room in both both presidents' houses, and they're curious, and that's okay. I don't have anything to hide. And there was one occasion here, in fact, <clears throat> I had the downstairs of the president's house was our living room furniture and stuff. And we would have people could go down there. It was we. We filled, the, we filled the house with people. <clears throat> anyway, I had a closet with a bunch of family pictures in it. So on this one night, Jim and I had to be on the campus, so we were gonna host a couple's bridal shower the next day. So I said, okay, you all, there's a key. Go in, get your stuff displayed, and whatever you were doing here. And we got back that night about 9.30, they were still there. And they said, oh, we found your pictures down in the closet. There, you're just real people. I said, Duh. <laughs> so, I, I mean, and I will, uh, it, it, I, I, that's okay. I didn't have anything to hide. But, it, but it, it, it is what happens. So we had some funny stories like that to share. But all in all, it was, it was generally very positive. That was very good. And, and there was a, an occasion in those meetings, some year there, that, um, there were a couple of them decided they wanted to get paid as as a spouse, mm -hmm. and there was a real hiss that went across the room, because I think mm -hmm. we all kind of thought, no, your 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 president, your spouse uh, is getting paid nicely, and you're provided a home, and probably housekeeping, so like, let's just be happy with that. I think that was the general thought among us, but then there'd be some that thought they should be paid, and I think they actually got paid. But it, then they threw the room with. Oh, is it still that way? Do you think? I don't know. I don't know. I think a lot of a lot of women are um, probably they've spent so much time getting their education, they don't want to give that up, mm -hmm. and I get that. Mm -hmm. They worked. They got a PhD. Um, there's just a different mindset today, I think, among women that have gone through and gotten into engineering and things, and, and I get that. And so I, whatever it is for them, I did what I did, and it worked for us. <clears throat> and I, they'll, they'll have to figure it out and do, do what they do. I figured just, I'm not going in there and make a battle out of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not going to, yeah. How many women usually uh, went to the meetings? Oh and my, then. we had like maybe a hundred, something like that. Oh, mm -hmm. they, were, they were a lot of them. Mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, I enjoyed it. I looked forward to seeing them from year to year. And then of course they would, they would change. Some would move, uh, but some had gotten fired. Uh, but you'd always, you'd see somebody that you'd known before and you were probably from your own area of the country, but you met people from other places, which was delightful. <laughs> and you saw what it was like for them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we had we had quite a group. Mm -hmm. So was the compensation issue the most uh, that was the controversial? Most heated. Yeah, it was. It was really mm -hmm. the only controversial mm -hmm. thing that that ever came up that, uh, that where the room went, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but. Uh, everybody had their their stage in life, and you just listened to what they did, and if that worked for them, it was okay. You know, mm -hmm. it's kind of what it was. You know, did you hold leadership roles in the organization? I did. What was I? One year, I did something like a co something. I don't remember exactly what that was, but yeah, we sort of. I did that for mm -hmm. just a year. We just kind of rotated things around. So yeah, but I was in there a long time because ten years at New Mexico State, and then almost nine here. Mm -hmm. And although we didn't get to every one of them, we got to most of them because we found them valuable. Jim would see other presidents, and they'd talk about what they'd do to solve something or sharing. If the sharing was it was a big deal, and mm -hmm. you got ideas from them, and maybe they got some from you. And that was kind of what it was. Yeah. Do any particular ideas come to mind that you brought back or that he brought back? Um, 
Well, I, I know one thing that some of the wives would get a big, uh, they get a project on the campus, which I did not do. But one of them got an art gallery started on her campus. And another one uh, did, they, they would do some sort of a campus project. Mm -hmm. And I didn't adopt those ideas. I ended up being busy enough with the things in the community, uh, like here and in Tulsa and um, sorority. I was busy enough and keeping up with the calendar, mm -hmm. with our life together and keeping in touch with the family and finding time to see everybody. And I still had my, my dad died the first year we were here, but then I still had mom, mother in Iowa. So I, I didn't aspire to be on the campus to um, figure out something to do. Mm -hmm. But a lot of them did that. And they were, they, it was great that they did. It was like Ann Harvest here with the pet posse and the, and the, and the stuff. I, I love that. I applaud her for that. And I've had people, I had two different people call me over time and say, oh, thank you for what you're doing with the dogs. I said, that's not me. <laughs> we laugh because she's Ann H and so am I. And we don't see each other that much. We're, I've got, I'm flying here and she's flying there. Uh, we get along great, but uh, they, they try to confuse us. And back in Lubbock even, um, there were the Harrigans and the Halligans. And the wife in the Harrigan family was a brunette. Here I'm a blonde, they mixed us up. So it, it just happens, you know. Anyway, um, we laugh about it. So I just kept to the community and the family and whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you, Tell me about when you first saw the president's house here. What were your thoughts? I thought it was cold and dreary and dank and dark because it was a nasty cold day. Frankie Boger took me in and she um, she was wonderful. Um, and she lived there? Uh-huh. She had uh, President Boger. Mm -hmm. I forget how long they lived there. And the comms had lived there. So I thought it was dreary and dark. And we had come from this big adobe with a lot of light and color but the sunny climate there that's just two different climates anyway uh I, well we'll figure it out it would uh, we were in this apartment in Brentwood, which is a wonderful wonderful complex over by the high school um i thought okay we can fix this this is where we're going to live this is they're providing this for we can do it <laughs> well deborah engel came to me within the first two weeks she's from the foundation mm -hmm. And she said, I'm going to help you raise some money for some refreshing. Uh, the furniture needed reupholstering. So we had that done at down at Oak Mulgee in our campus there, which they, I don't think they do that anymore, but we had that done there. Uh, we had um, some new carpet put in. We um, had new flooring in the kitchen. There was carpet in the kitchen. I said, hmm, we did flooring. Uh, just, we didn't raise all that much. And most of the money came from Tulsa or Enid or not Stillwater. And we put some in ourselves. We did a payroll deduction for a period of time to cover what we got done. <laughs> and we made it work. We really did. The, 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 the campus had put a new roof and air conditioning and they had improved the master bedroom before we got here. And so it worked out just fine. It really did. We. The physical plant took care of the grounds, and and the harvests have done much more to it. It's very very nice, and even even the president before harvest, they did some stuff. They fixed something downstairs. Uh, they did a shower in that little bathroom downstairs, which there was no shower facility down there. I thought that was a good thing. So a little by everybody puts their touch to it, but we did what we had money to do. And we didn't raise all that much, less than $50,000 to do mm -hmm. these little touches. And um, I would buy things that we needed to have and it, it worked out just fine. It served the purpose and it was all good. Mm -hmm. Were there any traditions associated with the house that you felt like you needed to carry on? No, I, I didn't know of any, mm -hmm. I really didn't. Mm -mm. Do you have favorite memories from living there? Yeah, the neighborhood, the people in the neighborhood uh, and their dogs uh, and the kids, the paper boys. We'd, we'd be having, and those paper boys, I saw their mother recently. The ones on the East Coast, ones on the West Coast, ones in engineer and ones in um, the software. They're in their 30s. Oh. 
those boys would come and deliver the Stillwater paper, and I'd say, hey, we're having a little gathering. You want to come in and get something off the table? They'd come in. They lived, they lived in the neighborhood. Um, other little neighbor kids would come and sell things. <clears throat> we loved that, because in, in New Mexico, this big house sat up on the desert on the golf course, and there was no neighbor within a quarter of a mile. So this was nice because I had people. I got acquainted with the ladies in the neighborhood, and mm -hmm. they'd come for coffee, or I'd do coffee. And a wonderful old gentleman that lived on the next block, and, and I, he loved to bird watch. And, I, he got so he couldn't drive, so I'd take him, we'd go driving. I tell him, you tell me where to drive and we're gonna watch. He counted birds. Oh. Every spring we'd go riding, bird riding. Uh, it was that kind of thing that I liked so much that I knew these people as neighbors. And we got invited to their 4th of July party and, and, and things like that, and I loved that. And of course, students came. And we had one night, um, we had um, a, We'd gone to a ball game. We played Texas here, and we beat them. <laughs> so we're in our pajamas, and the doorbell rings. And it's the kid from the Ocali, and he oh. has brought us an edition of the Ocali that we won. We beat Texas. And he got out. He couldn't start his car. And so Jim had to go out and boost his car. And But that uh, people didn't really come up, and they never bothered us. Now, I know other campuses where people were bothered on their campus. They Something rude or crude would happen at their front door on a president's house as you as we'd go to that meeting. You, you'd hear that from people. Uh, but the only, I think that's the only time a kid came. Anyway, but it was good. Um, Love the kids here. Just, and when you, read, when you hear the news and you, then you see these kids, you know, it's, we're gonna be okay. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that was good. Happy time. Okay, let's talk about um, OSU Tulsa. Mm -hmm. And uh, early, I think, in the uh, your time here, really? that yeah. was a big thing. Mm -hmm. a and big thing. you had a place in Tulsa, and you were trying to juggle both places and mm -hmm. build relationships. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. Uh, we needed to have a four-year campus in Tulsa. They, they really want a public one. <laughs> and so... We worked, uh, they worked in the legislature and got it through that we could do this and the OSU Tulsa. So Walt Helmrich, who was um, a really well-to-do man in Tulsa, the Helmrich family is still there. He was not a graduate here. He called Jim one day when we first got phones in the car and he said, are you driving? And Jim said, yes. He said, well, I don't, hey, pull over. I want to talk to you. I want you to have an apartment here in my building in Tulsa, New York Town Towers, which is by Utica Square, my favorite shopping center mm -hmm. in the world. Um, Jim said, that's pretty high rent, Walt. He said, I, well, said, I'll deal with, it, with the regents. So the regents and Walt did whatever and we had a first floor furnished apartment in Yorktown Towers, 24 hour guard. Mm -hmm. um, you had parked in the parking garage there. Um, and Jim did what it took to do the one on the campus. I did the board work. We were there in two cars back and forth. I don't know how we did it, but we did it. Uh, we were involved. We'd go to events in Tulsa. There's something all the time there to go to, just like there is here. Mm -hmm. So you got involved there and went um, and, it, and got went to the campus to see. So it was a very different climate there because you had returning older people who needed to come back and get something. And so we found that uh, there would be some of our students would ride the bus in and take some graduate classes. So they'd live in Tulsa and come out here. There was some of that with that bus system that started. And when that was first suggested, Jim said, oh, I don't know, but that's been a great system to have that bus. <clears throat> but it, we, we just went back, but we had that place for four years. It was wonderful. Um, and we had, I had bedding there. I had clothes there. Uh, we'd go for walks in the morning there, just like we do here. Mm -hmm. But I had things here, so we lived in two places. Um, it, 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 it worked out. Um, I, I'm not sure how we did it, but like you raise your children, you don't, 
we're watching our neighbors raise their children and their dogs and where they're going. And we did it too. And now we go back with the how did we? So you just do. You did everything you needed to do. We drove lots of miles and uh, had both cars sometimes. And um, it was very congenial. It, it was a good thing. And so um, that was what we did. He had a good office staff there and one here. And um, it it was, uh, I think the enrollment has gone down some and that's a little distressing. So, but I, I we hope that will be, I know Pam Fry is taking it over now and mm -hmm. I hope that's a good thing, yeah. Let's talk about campus traditions. So I've read that uh, there were baskets of cookies delivered. Oh, that was to certain uh, key people on campus. Was, were you involved in that? I was not. I was not involved. That was a staff thing. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> some staff members said they wanted to honor some of their fellow staff members for mm -hmm. something. So they went to the president's office and they said, yeah, celebrate state. Mm -hmm. And so they would have somebody in their mind and they get we'd get uh, cookies and balloons and Jim would go and I think Charlotte would go with them they go across the campus and the person getting surprised didn't know and uh, one of my good friends that I know in my PEO chapter was one of those that got surprised in the College of Vet Med one day she she, she still talks about that she's not there anymore but um, she she wasn't a veterinarian she just worked in there <clears throat> but anyway People love that, the recognition. Mm -hmm. And, and um, because the staff are the people who keep the wheels on the place, let's face it, they do. The secretary with the schedule, it takes the RSVPs and the regrets. They keep the wheels on the place. The custodians keep it clean. They're probably the only person that smiles at a kid in a day. Department secretary, uh, that was what that was about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a good thing. Who were some key people that you interacted with here? Oh my goodness, key people here. Oh my. Well, we always saw the comms when they were still around. We enjoyed seeing the comms. So we, we just see them now and then. Um, uh, and then like alums probably, because you, Jack Zink was a big deal. He was in Tulsa. He's now gone. But he, we'd get to know these wealthy alums around. And... Um, uh, just, I don't know, there were so many. Just the Helmrichs in Tulsa, um, Mary and Jim Barnes in Tulsa. I saw Mary at the game Saturday. Um, we had uh, the McKnights. We went to see them. Megan was 14. Now she's a mommy with three boys, oh. lives in Dallas. And it's the Midnight Center. Yes. But you get acquainted with these people. Um, there are just so many. Mm -hmm. And we've been out of there for seven, we've been in the, our own house for 17 years now. So as a, long, a lot of time has passed. Mm -hmm. But um, we still see some of the people. Uh, you, you think of the students you had, and some have moved back here, some are doctors. Uh, professional people. It is so, you. it's like you with your English kids in high school. You've seen them grow up and you know what they're doing now. It's, it, I, I'm too far away from Lubbock, Texas to see that in my students. But um, that is really nice to see. You remember when they were a freshman and now you see what they've done, what they're doing. It's really cool that we've been able to stay and see this, yeah. When did you decide to put your roots down here in Stillwater? Pretty early, because mm -hmm. we liked it here. Um, when we got here, our boys were all in Texas. Austin, San Antonio, and Houston, perfect. Um, they said to me, when we were gonna come here, they said, how are you gonna look in orange, mom? But <laughs> I have a blouse just like that. Yeah. So, um, then the Houstonians stayed and Austin and San Antonio moved around. Um, we liked it here and thought, I hope we, I hope we can stay. Mm -hmm. It has four seasons. There's enough roll and woods to it that we like. Um, 
we and so when it turned out we could stay we weren't getting fired or having a big heated departure uh we just bought a little house out in the south edge of town and and moved and just Jim was teaching a little bit one semester mm -hmm. uh each each semester and he taught in Tulsa he'd ride the uh, the bob in and uh teach usually evenings and uh, I still did my board work and did my own housekeeping now and he did the yard work and which we still do and um we it was pretty early on in our life that we, and I'd say within the first few years we decided we liked it here so much and and the people it's again it's the people and if you go somewhere else and people don't say much from we just say you're not in Oklahoma anymore but but it's like the walking from the union is where the kids speak to you you speak to them you smile to them it's just how it is here I love it yeah. mm -hmm. uh, okay so in doing some some research for in preparation for the interview, um, one of the things that stands out to me, and I interviewed um, Dr. Lee Bird this summer. Oh, did you? Yes, yes. yes. Uh -huh. I had her as an instructor. Mm. I went through the um, higher ed the GED program here, and she was one of my favorite instructors. She's great. Um, but one of the things that stands out to me in the um, interviews and, and things and that people have said was um, how much a, of a united front in a team you and Jim are. We are. And I think that's very remarkable. Um, and I, that I was curious as to whether that is something that evolved as he moved up into the administrative positions that he had. Uh, what, what kinds of things shaped, shaped that with you all? Probably we grew up in the same place. Mm -hmm. He, a very devout Catholic, me, a very devout Lutheran. <laughs> the biggest difference you could find. Um, I ended up joining the Catholic Church mm -hmm. and we're very active in it. In fact, I've been able to serve on the building committee of our new church and the building of our new rectory. So that it's was a gorgeous. big the deal for me. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, I, I, we just always got along. Um, we don't fight. We might disagree. We might show our teeth or growl. But um, we always felt, you know, he said he wanted to be, um, well, he went to the Air Force. He didn't have money to go to college. His, his English teacher was his encourager, Mrs. Parr. She taught music, too. We loved her. Um, so we just saw what we had to do. Um, and we just went to work and he studied and I went to work at the TV station at night and typed program logs. He took care of Mike. He was the only one we had when we got to college. Mike was, he would put Mike to bed, tell him a story, made up stories for him every night. And, and <coughs> I'd go to work from seven till 10. <clears throat> and we made it work. We, we had, like last night, we watched the Garth Brooks show on, um, Arts and Entertainment, A&E channel. He's doing it again tonight. It's his biography. Mm -hmm. And Garth talks about when he first got married, they lived in this little house when they were trying to get into the music world. They lived in Henderson, Henderson Tennessee. There were like five adults and he and his wife, Sandy, and an infant child and a couple of dogs. And they were pieced together. To, and I thought, yeah, we did that. We did that. I can remember when we had $10 a week for groceries back when, but it was like well, 50 years ago, which is different. But um, we we just made it work. It, we did what we had to do. We didn't have help from our parents. Uh, if we went to see my parents, they'd send home some groceries, but never any cash. We were, And we would watch some of our neighbors getting cash and all. We'd go, you know, but we just did it. We just agreed. He said what he wanted to do. We agreed it was a good thing. Um, it's just been like that for 62 years. And, and now I've learned it. before we got here, I would go say to the grocery store and I'd see older couples in there snarling, arguing, nasty fighting in the Walgreens or the grocery. And one of my friends talked about that. Is that how it is when you retire? <laughs> so if we go to the grocery store together now, he has a list. I have a list, he has a cart, I have a cart. <laughs> and we go and we each know how to self check out or go to our favorite checker. And there's no snarling, no showing of teeth. Uh, 
He knows how to shop, and so do I. Because if something happens to one of us, you, we both better kind of know, because we've got enough friends at this age who are can't get out, mm -hmm. not able, um, very sick. And so every day we get up and we're grateful for our health, and we just do it together. And when evenings when we fix a meal, he wants to help. And so he does one thing, I do another. We help clean up. I, it's just worked that way. I don't, it's just how it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No plan. It's just evolved that way. <clears throat> have there been uh, some significant times when you have helped him make decisions or been a, just a huge support? Uh, No, I, not, not so much. Um, he's, he pretty well knows what he wants to do. And I, 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 if, I, if I think it doesn't sound so good, I might say, hey, maybe think that over again or something. But I never had any strong opinions about how we should run a certain place. I, I think I had enough to do with my own because I keep the calendar in the family. I do the family finances. Mm -hmm. He calls the family the paying the bills minutia. Now he can see the big budget of the university and know all about that. And I, I don't get that. But I, I know, and every, uh, so I think I had enough busy with my own stuff that I didn't mess with what he needed to decide. But I do know that I, Every about every other every couple of months we get a yellow pad and a calculator and a pen and he sits down and I show him where things are the finances uh, this is what we have here you add it up and you write it down and we keep that because if so, if I die it's going to be you and I recently had a friend. Who I know. I oh, and I forgot one thing. I should tell you about my volunteer world. But I have a friend whose husband. They went on a nice trip. He got sick on the trip, and two weeks later he was dead. And she came to me and she said, "I don't know anything about the finances." And and that go, and let me go back to here to women in philanthropy here at OSU. Mm -hmm. And that started. I was involved, and I still am a member. We now call it Women for OSU. But at that point in time. Uh, it was run through HES. Pat Kanab was the dean. But we learned that many women don't understand financing. They don't understand the family finances. And, you know, we have a sister-in-law who's <laughs> Jim's next brother died at age 44. And Rosalie didn't know anything about the finances. They lived in St. Louis. She's still there. But Bill died after three months. And she knew nothing, didn't know where the checkbook was. And there, the high school business teacher in me is coming out again about understand it. Both of you need to know a little something about this. But I tell Jim, you need to know, because if I die, this is where this stuff is in the house, all that. But the women in philanthropy thing was a great um, program to get ladies, because women have more money these days get them involved and how to give, whether it's their time or their talents <laughs> and um, or their money. And, and it, they made a big difference. And we give scholarships every year and through Women for OSU. But one of my, back to my volunteer stuff, one of my favorite things, and I still do it, we were moving from the president's house and we had stuff in Tulsa. We had big, anyway, the first part of 2003. So we get out. And I had too much stuff, so I found out there was a little store downtown that would take furniture called Elite Repeat. And so the movie van went downtown and delivered what I needed to give. They called and they said, would you come down and be a cashier? I said, well, let, this was January. I said, let me get settled a little bit. So I went there in May of 2003 and I'm still there. I love it. It's my favorite, favorite, favorite thing because I'm at the register one afternoon a week. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I sub for a night. But you have, at the end of the day, when we check out on our register, two of us have to account for the money, sign the worksheet. Um, you have had anywhere from 90 to 100 customers who bought something that day, not to mention those who came on the drive. But you see the public. Oh. You see Main Street. I love it. Just love it. And we give all our money away. 
Nobody gets paid. And I took a carload of donations down yesterday uh, myself because I'm starting to clear out. We're, we're going to move to the Legacy Village this okay. next spring whenever mm -hmm. it gets finished up mm -hmm. and put the house on the market. And all. But that is another thing I've done in the community. And that's a long time now. But I, okay. I And uh, I take care of the greeting cards in that store. But that's good. But but the um, the women the women for OSU, I really like that that got started here. That That is a gets women involved in what they can do in their community to help. It's good. Good. I'm glad you shared that with me. Um, so tell me about his decision to run for the Senate. Never had been a topic in our house. Never. And I've said a few things about politicians. And um, people came to him. The Democrats came to him, the Republicans came to him. We were listed as independents. Mm -hmm. um, on a campus, we felt that's, you, it was neutral. Mm -hmm. And so um, you kind of went by the person that was in the running. Right. And so he finally decided to run and then analyzing how things were, he decided more, more Republican than Democrat. <clears throat> and um, so he ran, um, decided to go for it. What is this? So we started out that we um, we had to file and all that and get and at that point in time when he started was it was like two thousand seven I guess it was. He spent that year right, and the election was two thousand eight. That was the first. So we made the decision, and we then got filed and the neighbor across the street called about two weeks before filing and said, you know, I'm not going to run. We never knew he was going to. We had never heard. And he was a judge here in the community. So here he was going to be the Democrat. And his, had, his dad had had this seat for 20 some years. Dad was gone now, but anyway. So we go, well. So anyway, so now you've got to work. So we get a campaign manager. And we then um, decided we, we got to go knock on doors. We had uh, a part of Stillwater, Southern part of Stillwater, half of Guthrie, Coyle, Perkins, Cushing. So that district of the first part. Mm -hmm. So we went to all these places and knocked on doors. We got a, one of the guys, a business professor said, you got to have a driver. We said, we never had a driver. Mm -hmm. Get a driver. So he found a guy, one of our alums, Army helicopter pilot, retired, wonderful relationship. Joe Jim, Jim, Joe Jim struck. And we went one on each side of the other, and you go to the door and hand a card and say, I'd like to ask you for the vote. And I had a guy come to the door once, and he said, is he Republican? And I said, yeah. I said, slam the door. Another one said, came to the door, and he said, I'm a felon. Can I vote? And I said, no. <laughs> but it was a card anyway. <laughs> but it was a great experience, because you, you know a lot about the community when you go to their front door. And you learn that people don't go in their front doors. They go in through the garage, and through their front door is covered with leaves and whatever. Has me sweeping my front door every morning, I, have, I promise. And in the 62 years of marriage, I've had one person come to our door with a campaign card, anywhere we've lived. And it was here in Stillwater. Just recent. No, that was a good experience. We learned. He ran, and uh, and uh, we had uh, helpers. We paid um, one of the girls here in town to help with it. Um, it, it we learned a lot about it. Uh, then the election came, and you were nervous. He won by sixty percent, and we have the, the gathering. Um, down at the old post office, which is now the art gallery. Mm -hmm. we had, he had an office in there, rented it from the Baptist Church, because that's who owned it at the time. Um, and we had this office in the Senate, and one of the ladies who was his, the lady who was his uh, aide the first year, Kathy Jo Warner, had been here on campus, and she had worked in the ticket office in athletics. And um, she now has, was at the Capitol, so she worked the first year, and then she got a chance to move to uh, the PAGE program, where they take care of the pages and the insurance. But she went there, it was a little bit better paying. And Jim hired another one. He has several people interview, but he had me come down, and he hired Deborah. And Deborah was a native of Stillwater, has a twin brother, and she was perfect. She is still there, and I said, as Jim, then Jim served the four years, met a lot of great people, 
great experience, very positive. And you don't get everything done you want, mm -hmm. and you find there's some real, it, you don't get it all done like you want it. But then when he ran the second time, there was no opponent. And when you hear that, you go, Phew. you're like a dog that was chasing a car and caught it. You don't know what to do. And so then um, you can serve 12 years here, as you know. And after the second term, he was turning 80. And he said, you know, I don't need to be doing this anymore. So I'm not going to run. And then the two that did run, I said to them both, you need to keep Deborah Curry in the office. She's, she knows everybody in all the places in the state. And I think the biggest thing, that was good. We had some summer trips in that with some of the committees in the region that were good. We got to see some nice Americans, you know, like Louisville and New Orleans and places like that where they have these regional meetings. <clears throat> but I think we learned um, you can do an awful lot to help people as an elected official. If somebody's having an insurance problem, you can get your aid and you can help get to the people in the big office where maybe little old me can't get there, but the elected official can get in the door with it and help people. That's a huge part of what you do. And um, it was a very good experience. But the last year he was in session, he was really tired of it. But he drove every day. We lived such that it was taking him a little over an hour to get there. He never stayed overnight. Um, they had two or three stormy nights coming, but it was good. He'd call me and say I'm on my way, and I'd have dinner ready. And it was uh, it, it was a very positive experience. So good, glad we did it. Mm -hmm. Okay. We've had a really good life. Very blessed. So no complaints. What um, what would you like to see for OSU? Ah. Just a continued, I love the student leadership groups. I think they're good. I, the campus is beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, uh, winning in all the sports because the community's happy then. Everybody's happy mm -hmm. if you win. Uh, we, of course, we support all of that stuff. Um, just, it, it seems like it's in good shape right now. Just keep on mm -hmm. keeping on doing what we do, putting out these good kids. I like that we have a big native population. Um, I think that's a really good thing, a good thing that we have. Um, uh, we, it's just, um, I don't know. I think, I think it's in good hands. Just, they've done a great job here doing uh, carrying on with this and um really proud of some of our graduates and, and I, I learned but when i let me go back to when i went back to school but the abiding thing from me going back to school at texas tech was finish it mm -hmm. stick with it because i'd see kids that would get up at a, at a, a, a test and throw the paper in the basket and leave and just couldn't take it and how many people have you had come up to you as i have that said, you know, I went here, but I, I still didn't have but six hours or something to finish. It tells me that they didn't finish. I don't think any less of them, but finish, stick mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. I that. What would you like to see for Stillwater? For Stillwater? Mm -hmm. uh, not so many store closings. I mean, we're, wow. We lost our pennies. Uh, uh, I don't want to have to go out of town to shop. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I, I, I think, I hate. I think that's happening everywhere, though. Mm -hmm. It is, and I think it's changed a lot in the twenty-five years we've been here. Things have come. I like that the Children's Museum is going down where it is. Um, we've been supporters of that, but I think that's a good place for it right on, on Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, I think uh, I want Coach Boynton to do really well. And like him, I like his, the what he's about. Um, and of course, Gundy's doing well. The sports are important to people. That's what brings them in. And in fact, when you hear most of the people who buy tickets to the sports are from out of town. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a big deal. And the McKnight Center's good, I love that. 
we've been able to do all of that. Yes. It's been exciting. So, and the library, look what's happened in the library. The, the, the space in here is beautiful, what's yes. been done. Mm -hmm. I remember the coffee bar and all that was starting. Mm -hmm. That's good. Are there any topics that I didn't ask you that you would like to include? Um, no, I, I'm not. No, I'm, I'm just, I don't have any big issues. Uh, just, just for people to be nice to each other. I think, I don't care what city you wake up in in the morning. The news is the same. Mm -hmm. Just stop that. Stop being so mad at each other and uh, just be nice. <laughs> Peace. What advice would you give to or would you offer to women who are trying to achieve balance with their family and their career and other obligations they may run into oh. with their community? Yeah, they, uh, I don't see how they do it, but um, take time for yourself a little bit. Get your sleep. Go to bed at night and sleep. And today, women have issues that I didn't have. They, they have, every house has to have a computer or a laptop or two or so and the cell phones, all the screen time. Um, we didn't have that. That's an expense and that's a time user and we didn't have that. Um, put this phone away. Um, Take time for yourself. Learn how to sit and be quiet. Um, ten minutes. Just go, go sit, sit down, be quiet, breathe. I take yoga. I've, I've learned how to do yoga. <laughs> the yoga teacher will say, "Just breathe," you know. And that's mm -hmm. that. Um, and take care of your family. If it, just teach them to do things. Teach them to do the laundry. Have them help in the kitchen. Um, like our son in Charlotte on the inside of their little pantry door, it says, nothing to do. And then all these suggestions, <laughs> I love that. When I go there, I see that. Um, keep your family together, eat together, have family meals together. It's a big deal with sports and all, it's crazy, but have some time. If it, maybe it's just breakfast, but sit down together mm -hmm. and do that. that is, and I think they learned through the Truman Institution that People who have meals together with their kids, the kids do better. And I think that's an important thing. And of course, do your work, but you sometimes you have to leave that work home. And I learned in real estate, you can absolutely give your life away. You could, mm -hmm. but you learn you've got a family. And so you put some limitations on what hour that you'll do something. Mm -hmm. um, and, but I was lucky I had a husband with an income too. But if it's a woman who's just trying to make it on real estate, <laughs> for example, uh, at commissions, um, I, I see it. But you, you know, remember your family here. Yeah. And um, as Garth Brooks said last night, remember where you came from. Mm -hmm. That's a great show he did. That's great. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> well, Thank you so thank, much well, thank for you. participating in the interview. I've, I've learned a lot about you. I've admired you from afar for many well, years. Well, thank you. Our, our older son uh, came to OSU in 1998. Okay. And mm -hmm. met his wife here, and they both were two of the students that were invited to your house at yes. one time or another. Yes. Um, he was in PLC. Was he? Yes. She was as uh -huh. well. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I chatted with them over the weekend. I said, do you remember? going to the president's house oh yes 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 we heard that people, that, people you know. love to come and uh, we have them there just to thank them for what they do and we tried to greet each of them it, it was great it, it, it was a good experience and, and I, as i said these kids make you know it's going to be okay they really do i thought that for a very long time <laughs> well you all have been such a huge part of, of the campus and mm -hmm. its growth and the community too and mm -hmm. It's nice that you've stayed here and you continue to be as active as you have. And we well, just admire you and love you all so much. Well, thank you. We love it here. We love the people here. It's a happy place for us. So we're very thankful we could be here. So with our sons in three different time zones, we said we just 
just hang here. It'll be good. So good. Well, thank you. Okay. Good to meet you. you. Nice to meet you too.